Hello, I'm Pastor Richard Rodriguez. I'm the senior pastor of Christian Life Center Church here in Northeast Houston, uh, Kingwood, Texas area. And for the past uh, month or so, I've been getting a lot of requests and inquiries about a prophecy given by a gentleman uh, by the name of Dana Coverstone, Pastor Dana Coverstone. It's an interesting prophetic message, very intriguing, um, scaring some folks. And, uh, and so they've been writing to me, asking me my thoughts on it. So I thought I'd just share this message with you about you know, how should we react or how should we respond to this prophetic word given by this pastor? And I want to begin by saying I don't know. Pastor Coverstone, never met him, never heard of him. Um, watching the video, he seems very sincere. He seems like a godly man. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, why would people ask me? Uh, I've been the senior pastor here at Christian Life Center for, you know, a little over 30 years. And uh, our church does move in the prophetic uh, very much. Uh, some of the greatest prophets of our day. Uh, have ministered here. One of my closest friends is the late prophet Kim Clement, who prophesied the 9-11 events. Uh, he prophesied the Katrina hurricane floods from my church. Says the Spirit of the Lord, and I will take uh, the men that have stood in faith, raise them above the flood uh, that shall destroy those that constantly bicker and stand against my servant Moses or my servant Bilbo. I want you to understand there are great men in New Orleans that have faith, but you have been set aside not to lose, but to win, says the Lord. Enough of this, for I will take the curses and I'll even the bodies will even rise they will come forth on the water but God said I will keep you and the stench of death will only last a few days and then God said what I promised two years ago will come to pass for August and September and October of this year I made a promise it would happen and God said be strengthened now be strengthened now but enough is enough says the Lord come on Church, I've moved in the prophetic I've written a book uh, called Prophecy, Removing the Fear. I give it that title because a lot of ministers are afraid of prophecy. Uh, one of the things that Pastor Coverstone uh, did in his message, you know, he said, I'm not a prophet. I'm not proclaiming to be a prophet. And if, and if I'm wrong, well, um, and those are signs of somebody who you know, hasn't moved in the prophetic gift a lot and nothing wrong with that. I mean, God, God can use anybody, you know, uh, although he maybe not may have not been well known prior to this, it, it doesn't uh, affect the fact that the prophecy can be correct or not, you know. And so, um, but I did notice that in the in the message that uh, when they say things like that, it's usually because they're a little nervous about the prophetic gift. It's not something that they move in all the time. But anyway, to the to the message, and uh, I want to begin by telling you that uh, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's something to pay attention to, but we don't have to fear it. And I'll explain why as, as I go through this uh, response, if you will. Uh, to begin with, you know, Pastor Coverstone mentioned that he uh, gave the first prophetic message, I believe it was, it was a dream that he had uh, around uh, December, and everything that he had dreamed about took place. Now, he also mentioned that he reads 40 newspapers a day. That That's a lot. Now, I know he's not reading cover to cover. That would be a lot of information. But he's probably looking at headlines and uh, things that, are, that seem important to him from these different papers. And so people often ask, well, do you think maybe this, these dreams were just because of things he read? Well, it's possible. I say that because um, the virus uh, took place in the, I think it was in December in Wuhan, and uh, I, I've been to China many times, um, and so there was some news about this. If he's reading news from China, he might have read it and subconsciously you know, had the dream about what would happen uh, in in a pandemic. Uh, nevertheless, he had the dream, and uh, the things that he dreamt about did come to pass, uh, which is a good sign for a prophetic message. But yes, it could have been because of his reading the newspapers. Uh, he did say that he talked to other people about that to confirm that, that he did have the dream in December, and then these things happened throughout the, the following months. And then subsequently, he decided to share the message with more people because he felt it was something that he needed to get out, that God had spoken to him, which is what prophecy is. Prophecy is simply reception and declaration of a word or an action from God uh, given under the, the influencing of the Holy Spirit, which is what he said he, he was doing. In the second dream, I believe he said things about 
uh, the United States Mint uh, coins becoming obsolete, if you will, and and we see that happening now. Uh, now, he gave that uh, it, interpretation of the dream or that explanation of the dream prior to the latest news we have. I, I think it's July the twentieth. I think is today's date. Um, but anyway, when he gave that message, there was also news prior to his dream about the Mint uh, having some problems and employees not being able to go to work because of the virus. And so again, is it possible that this was a subconscious thing that he dreamt about because of what he read? Yes, it's possible. But I would say that going on from that point, for example, he talked about uh, the $1 bills and $5 bills soon following. In other words, becoming obsolete, they quit printing those. Um, we see that kind of thing happen during a time of hyperinflation. I've seen this in other countries that I go to where their uh, small bills, their, sm their currency, their coins uh, are no longer valued. Uh, I was in India and uh, found a coin and I gave it to somebody and they threw it back at me. And then I realized it was one one hundredth of a cent. It used to be a penny in India. And now it's one one hundredth of one of our pennies. It's almost useless. The the metal of the coin is worth more than the coin itself. And so that, that happens during hyperinflation. And of course, I know that I, just as a, a business person, when I saw that the president was going to give away trillions of dollars, and uh, today they're talking about giving trillions more out, I wondered what's going to happen to the economy. I mean, you you can't give out trillions and trillions of dollars and it not affect the value of our currency. And so, um, yeah, I think it wouldn't not, not just prophetically, but I think people could predict that our currency is going to lose value and there is going to be inflation. Now, if it's a hyperinflation where we stop printing ones and fives, if that happens soon, I would definitely pay more attention to this prophetic word given by Dana. But one thing that I would want to uh, caution you on. Uh, if, if you look at the video and, and you hear him give the word, he says, you know, God gave me this dream. I, I knew it was from the Holy Spirit. And in the dream, this happened and this happened. And so I think we need to get groceries and I think we need to get guns. And I think, well, when he says, I think that he's no longer prophesying. You got to understand, prophecy is receiving and declaring a word given to you by God under the direction of the Holy Spirit. So when he says, in the dream that the Spirit gave me, and the Lord showed me this, and He said, "Brace yourself." That's one word or one phrase that He continued to use: "Brace yourself, brace yourself." And that's very important because if I'm going to brace myself, that means I'm going to stand in a way that if I get hit, I'm ready to take the hit, or I'm, there somebody's going to push me and they're not going to knock me down because I've braced myself. A boxer would use that term, brace yourself, or a football player, brace yourself. It just means, you know, get a firm stand so you don't get knocked down. Well, what that tells me, God didn't say run and hide. He didn't say leave, you know, move to another country. No, no, no. He just said brace yourself. See, in, in the early months of this year, uh, January, February, March, we took a hit with this pandemic. But we survived. And I know some people got hit harder than others, but, but we survived. And so God is saying, brace yourself again. In other words, there's going to be other hits coming. There's going to be other problems coming. But it's not going to be devastating. If, you're, if you brace yourself, if you're ready, if you're prepared, you're going to be able to take the hit. And it's not going to be fun. But you're going to make it through this. And that's why I say you don't have to worry. God's still in control. God knows the end from the beginning. And that's how he's able to tell us these things. And so he's just telling you, get ready. Brace yourself. Be prepared. Never once in the vision did he say, God didn't say, go get your guns. Now, I, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And I don't feel like that was a prophetic message about getting your guns. Now, getting extra groceries, that's not a problem. Um, if you want to do that, uh, do it. Get stuff that you would use normally that's non-perishable and, uh, and be ready. That way, if something happens, you're prepared. If nothing happens, you don't have to buy groceries for a couple of weeks, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, when you're watching the prophecy, make sure you differentiate between this is what the Lord showed me, this is what the Lord said, and hey, I think you ought to. Because sometimes as pastors, and, and I'm not saying anything bad about this pastor. I, I don't know him, but just uh, watching the video, he seems like a great guy. And if I was a member of his church, I'd, I'd, I'd trust him. Um, 
but we have to listen to any prophet and, and make sure sometimes that they want to express how they feel about the prophecy or how they interpret the prophecy and that's not prophecy prophecy is just declaring what god told you i give you an example years ago there was a gentleman who walked in our church he had a brace on and the lord told me that when he was a young man in high school that he was riding a bull and he fell off and hurt himself and this was uh, he re-injured that old hurt crazy word but i knew it was god so i told him i said young man the lord told me when you were in high school that you were riding a bull and you fell off and hurt yourself and you've re-injured that old uh, accident and he said i never rode a bull i said well that's what the lord told me and i didn't back down and say oh i'm i'm wrong because i knew what the lord told me and 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 it's not my reputation god said it and god can handle it so i just said well that's what the lord told me and i went on and prayed for other people and as I got down to the end of the line of people that I was praying for, the young man shouted out, hey. And, and I turned and looked. I said, yes. He said, I did ride a bull, and I did hurt myself. I said, well, why didn't you tell me? He said, I forgot. And, and I thought, well, I sure couldn't know, you know. But it was a word from God. And so you want to make sure you differ, differentiate between when somebody says, you know, the Lord showed me this, the Lord told me this. And I think we ought to say that's different. When you say, I think. The Apostle Paul would even say that in, in the scriptures. He would say, now this is from me, not from the Lord. Okay, And so the message I got in the entire uh, prophetic word was that we should brace ourselves, that more problems are coming. Um, can we predict that in November, when uh, the President Trump gets reelected, that there's going to be more uh, unrest? Of course, it happened before. I think it's going to happen again. Will it be worse? Probably so. I mean, it was pretty bad the last time, and uh, these recent riots and uh, carrying on has been very bad. Uh, so, yeah, I think we should brace ourselves and, and, and be prepared that that could happen again. The most disturbing thing about the dream had to do with the United Nations and other countries' military being in America. Um, that was a little strange. I know that it's normal for us to go to other countries and help them after a tsunami or after a uh, you know disaster of some kind very rarely would we have other countries come in and help us but it's not impossible in the dream he said i didn't see the president that doesn't mean the president wasn't president it doesn't mean he wasn't uh still running the country it just meant he didn't see him so he may have been uh, in a safe place somewhere because of the unrest uh he because he mentioned washington burning um, so I would just tell you that as a pastor, as a friend, as somebody who has worked in the prophetic for many, many years, uh, you know, pay attention to the prophecy. Don't be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And, and use wisdom. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with preparing. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't go overboard. And, uh, and just pay attention. If you start to see that uh, the, the mid's going to stop printing ones and fives, you know, that, that would tell me that his, you know, his uh, dreams are, are accurate and they're coming to pass. And if the first six or eight things have come to pass, I'd pay closer attention to the last few things, you know. But bottom line is uh, what the Lord said was brace yourself. In other words, just get ready to take the hit because you can take it and you can remain standing. And after all is done, God is still in control. Uh, and, you know, one of the other things that I did, of course, is I weighed this prophecy against other prophecies that, that have been given by friends of mine that I know and, and trust very well. And, uh, and so I do believe that Trump will be reelected in November. That was a prophetic word given um, before Trump even ran for the presidency. Uh, it, was, it was prophesied that he would win two terms. And so I believe that's going to happen. Um, and I believe America is going to stay strong. And, and I do know that if America was in trouble, that the whole world would be in trouble. I mean, we are the greatest economy on the earth right now. And so if there was a problem, yes, I believe the United Nations would be willing to come in and help. Uh, hopefully we don't need that kind of help, but let's just pray about it. And, and that's uh, another thing. People often ask, well, can we pray and change prophecy? We can touch the, the hand of God. We can influence what he does. Uh, revelation, prophetic revelation, can't be changed. It's just revealing something that's already happened. It's it's already going to happen. Uh, that's what revelation means. However, if you remember uh, Nineveh, Jonah went to Nineveh and said, this place is going to be turned upside down. 
yeah, in 40 days, I think it was. Um, and they prayed. And, and the place was still turned upside down. It went from a pagan city to a, a city of people that were all born again. But, but it says that God didn't do what he was going to do. Okay, because their prayers affected uh, God's action. He still turned the place up down. He still kept his word because God does that. That's God is uh, someone who keeps his word. He does not lie, cannot lie. And if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Uh, but he changed the way it was going to happen. And so, yes, your prayers can have an effect and can have an impact on the prophetic. Uh, and if you have questions, you have concerns, feel free to uh, drop me a note and uh, subscribe to this channel if you would. And, and concerning the book, if you want a copy of the book, you'd have to message uh, the church because we only sell it through the church here. I didn't really write it to try to make a lot of money on the book. I wrote it because I felt that people needed to not be afraid of the prophetic. It's a wonderful gift and it's alive and well today. God is still speaking to his children. We just need to take time to listen. God bless you. Thanks for watching.